Hi guys, Dana Alexander here from Prestige Dog Grooming School and the Everyday Pet Groomer. I've got a little guy here, a little Shih Tzu a puppy, first time groom. Um, he has been in for a little bath and tidy before, but nothing else. And uh, he came in severely matted today, so we did have to shave his body. Um, but we were able to demat most of his head and his tail and ears. So anyways, I want to show you guys a quick little round Shih Tzu head. So let me flip the camera here and hand you over. Okay, so we got this little guy here. So we have shaved him down. And then this is his first groom, so his first head groom as well. So we'll see how this goes. But let me hand you over. guy's name is Nixon. He's super cute and he's been super well behaved so far so can't complain. I think he's a little cold now. He <laughs> has a lot of hair but he's a little cold but he's super sweet like he just wants to snuggle. He's super cute. So anyways um when I'm looking at this big head like it'd be super cute to take this guy into like kind of a shih tzu style head and even do a top knot but this owner has got two other shih tzus and she's she definitely likes uh, shorter heads. So I'm gonna go with um I'm going to go with a three quarter inch on my wall, five and one over a 40. Okay. And I'm going to come, if you've got a part in the head, I just work with it. Unless you want to put a ton of products in, I work with the parts. I'm going to work with it and I'm going to go side to side. Again, this is his first time having clippers on his head, so I'll see how he does. I'm just going to go slow. And I'm just, I'm really feeling for his reactions. Get that ear out of the way. And I'm going to go lightly over the side of my head. You can see that, guys? I'm not going right wrapped around. I'm just going very light. Because the key to a round head on a Shih Tzu is to not take off too much on the sides. If you take off the same length on the top as you do the sides, you end up taking a very small head. So the key is leaving enough hair on the sides of the head to get that round shape. So again, on this side, I'm going to take the top off and the side of the brow area. But as I get to the side of the head, I'm going to go lighter. Flip that ear over. Now side of the head, I'm going to go light, very lightly. Again, that side hair is essential to getting a round head. So not too much off the sides. I'm gonna come reverse off the skull and over his ears. Don't go too deep into your ears when you're cutting ear hair. You just wanna have the top hair. He's processing a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Poor little guy is really cold after all his hair is off, so he's doing really great. Sure. Just let her know I'll invoice her. Okay. For you transfer. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. She's coming there, Carol. Turn for it. All right. So we have. Now we've done our sides. We've done our top of the head. Now I like to. Sorry, guys. Had a call from there. So I like to blend the back of my skull in because we're blending into a 10 shade. So I'm going to come in with my dark purple guard next to blend that in. So I'm just going to come off the back of the skull here. This is just going to help me blend in and then I'm going to thinning share this. Anytime I can do something with clippers, it's just going to make it faster and easier. Come on the back of my skull and blend it in with my thin shears. Just going right into that number 10 shade. But always, you want to get it less and debulked with that dark purple guard comb first. That's what's going to make this blend so much easier. Even though you're going from so long into so short, that's how you can do it seamlessly. Okay, so now we have our big hairy head. And now we're not going to keep this big beard, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my light purple again, which I did on the top of the head. And what I want to do is I don't want to wrap underneath. What I want to do is come this way. What that's going to do is take off the bottom, but not that side hair that we were just talking about. 
we need this side cheek hair to get that round face. So you want to come this way. So that's the direction I'm going to take it off. And he's a little bit freaked out. So I'm just going to go a little bit slower. Because this is his first time. Hold on there, little man. So this way, guys. Okay. So if he's freaking out a little bit, we got our paw up. I'm just going to readjust him. Set him down again. Sit him down, getting comfortable. And then just go back at it. And this time I'm just going to rub it around his head a little bit. Just to get him more comfortable again. And just hold his head in different ways. So come this way, guys. So not wrapping around. If you do that, you're going to miss this cheek hair. And this is the stuff we need. So coming down this way. I'm just going nice and slow. I still want to get all the long hair, but I don't want to wrap around this way. Otherwise, I'm going to miss the hair that I need. Just under the chin, I'm going to go reverse, just to make it a bit easier to scissor. If it breaks out, I just slow it down and stop a little bit. Cheers here. I just like to get them to sit down because I do eventually train all my dogs to lay down for their heads. So just, I start that by getting him to sit. And then I'm just gonna rub it, just so you know, it's just comfortable. Now if we can't do it, that's okay, we just move on. Set them back down. I always move them back to where I wanted them. And sit them down. And do everything slower. With puppies, you just want to slow it down. Slowing it down can help them feel very, very comfortable and understood. Okay, so once this is how my head is prepped. So the back of my head is all nice and clear. We've got it blended into the ears. And then now I've got the whole head clipped. This is where I want to start. Under here is clear from where he had to be shaved out. So this is where I want to start. I would love to get this a little bit cleaner, but he's not having the reverse, but that's okay. We'll go to scissoring. And I like to start by scissoring around my eyes. I'm going to comb off the stuff around my eyes. Nope. And this is his very first time getting a face trim, so stop. Stop. So I'm just going to comb out everything by his eyes here. He's got, he's got quite a bit of runniness on his eyes, but it's hard to say if that's uh, just because he has so much hair in his eyes or his eye, who knows. So, we're just going to mention it to the owner when they come. Once I get that combed up in there, then I like to come in and just side to side. And if you need a little bit of control on these wiggly puppy heads, I like to hold the hair from the top muzzle as well. What that does is pop this hair out, so it's going to be a bit easier for me to get, even though he's jerking around. And it also allows me to pull his head to sit on my hand. So I'm pulling, you see how my fingertips are over here? I'm actually using my whole hand as like a mini little harness. So, but I'm pulling on that top hair with his chin hair so that I'm not just supporting, trying to control his face by just his chin hair. Because that's just not enough for this puppy. So I'm just gonna come in. And just nice and slow. So if you go in too fast, then it just freaks them out. Reassure him, and back in. And again, just those fingers supporting that head just helps him calm down. Again, I'm going to come and take the top muzzle hair too. Okay. And come in and comb out. No, no. And my shears. Guys, just be patient because it's worth it spending the time on a puppy. That's it. Like, have you guys seen that video? The one that the Christmas one with the little like wiggly toy puppy that's dancing around the table. It's basically this guy. <laughs> basically, this guy being pregnant. So, if we have really, really wiggly by the eyes, we only have a couple options. So. 
Okay, I'm going to try and get him to lay down. Because I'll have a little bit more control if he can lay down. But I don't think this guy is going to be a lay down candidate. Pull him back. And you want to make sure this hair is very lifted up, especially if you have a guy that's wiggly like this. I'm going to switch to a straight shear instead of a thinning shear because I have to do too many cuts with a, with a thinning shear. So that I can come in and do it faster. And remember that this side of your shear is blunt. So if you need to come in, stop. I know this guy is uh, reactive because I know his mother well and she loves to attempt to do home haircuts, which is this is what we get as a result. But we know this is the reality of dog grooming. We all get ones like this. So the most important thing is to remain calm because there's nothing else that's going to help this little guy calm down. Stop. And what he doesn't like is things approaching his eye. And I mean, can you really blame him? I mean, it's very difficult when you get something approaching your eye. And it's a little scary. So our other option is to clip it out, but I think that that's just going to kind of traumatize this guy a little more. So we're just going to keep readjusting him. And then coming back in. I'm also going to take this ear into my hold now too. This is just going to give me a little bit more support on the back of the head. challenge of first time puppies. First time puppies are hard. So I'm going to start him just getting used to the sound because he's, he's struggling with the idea of it by his eye. So I'm just getting him used to the sound. So uh, the kissy sounds help a little bit so he just got a little distracted enough. That's why I switched to the straight shear rather than my thinning shears because I know I'm only gonna get like one little opportunity to get in there. So if I use the thin shears, I'm not gonna get in there quick enough. Shh. You're good. You're good. And again, I'm gonna hold muzzle hair as well, not just the chin hair. Cause this is the kind of little guy with they're pulling, they're gonna rip their own chin hair out. So we don't want that either. Oh, you're fine. I'm gonna come in. You just want to keep taking their little paw and moving it. And I just reset them back to where I want them. And just reset them down. So this is a little guy we can have trained eventually. We just got to work with him. And this is likely just because of uh, the owner constantly trying to do a haircut. She holds his face and he's learned that if he throws a little hissy fit, that then he gets away with it. But then he gets to get away with it. So once we do get in, again, that's why I switched my straight shears because then I can do more work quicker because he's not going to allow me to just snip, snip, snip with my thinning shears. 
So then we would never be able to get this little guy's face done. And we're going to go with our little wings. So we got that part done. Now we're going to go in. Stop. You're good. And I just get him to re-sit down. And then I walk through that foot. Once it comes down, then I start working again. And then if I just kind of readjust him a bit until he puts that foot down. Because the foot up is just him disagreeing with the whole groom. Okay. And I would love to come and do this with thin shears, but again, I'm going to choose to go with my straight shears just because I know he's going to give me a very tiny window to work with him. Okay. And again, I like to hold that muzzle hair, not just chin hair. Way down would be better, but it's gonna take some work with this little guy. And I just keep readjusting my hole. Again, every cut I can get more because I'm not using a thinning shear. You gotta be very careful with these little guys because it can be very really easy to hurt them. More like stab them in the eye with a shear, so. And a clipper could be an option for this guy. The problem is, is that I really think he's gonna fight even worse for a clipper in this area. So that's why I haven't selected a clipper. But the more we allow him to just kind of have this little moment, but we keep going, then we're going to get a calm response. And then the more I can get done when he has those little calm moments like you just had, then I can get more in. But see, it's a long process. But it's worth it on a puppy. It's absolutely worth taking your time on a puppy because they will, they will get there. And plus, this is a lifetime of grooming I'm going to do on this guy. So I'm going to spend a lifetime with this guy. So I want him to be good for grooming so it's worth it me taking my time now if I just force him down and make him do it then uh, we're going to end up having this type of relationship for the rest of his little life whereas now I can get we're going to get more and more of these calm moments as we go because all he's going to learn right now is that a I'm not stopping but b that all I want is calm but keep in mind that it's me that has to stay calm no matter what he's doing so I mean he's already given me a good what are we at on the video? 10 minutes? Five, 10 minutes on there? So that's, that's how long it took for him to just calm down enough for that. But what I'm doing is I'm building the trust. So once I have the trust built up, now I'm gonna be able to do more and more work without the same reaction. So you see? Let's see how long it took him to get there. And I didn't have to manhandle him. I didn't have to do anything to get him other than give him time. Just not give up and give him time and stay calm. So that he learns that all I wanted was calm. So once I have this area cleared off, sorry guys, it'll be a longer video than I expected, just with, but that's uh, first time puppies. Now what I'd like to do is, we got our eyes cleared. Now I'm gonna flip his ear over, hold it with my other hand, and I'm gonna get the side of his head. Remember the side of his head was the vital area. So I'm going to come with my curve shear and just barely dust it in. And again, we're going to see a whole different behavior from this puppy because I let him have his moment until he decided he was ready. And now he's good. But I didn't give up. But I didn't have to be harsh. I just showed him that all I want is peace. So now he's actually putting his head in my hand on his own, which is perfect. And this is how I get all the puppies trained to eventually lay down and just set their heads in my palms, which you guys have seen in all my videos. But this is how I do it. I get the crazy puppies too. But this is how I do it. I just don't give up and I stay ultra, ultra calm. So I'm also just clearing, just dusting in that side of the head. And notice I'm not taking anything out of the bottom part yet. So same on this side, I didn't touch the bottom part. Because from a, when you look at it from the front now, we have to start to see this round coming in. So now I'm going to comb everything forward on the sides of his eyes. And I'm going to just trim this back. 
I want it to trim back into the side of the head. So I'll show you guys that on this side. Trimming it back into the side of the head. I find a lot of people when they're trying to do bigger round heads leave this really heavy overhang on the side of the eyes. You actually want to get rid of that and blend it into, into the side. See how now we have almost like this little mohawk down the center? That's what we want. And then I'm going to come in. I'm going to attempt to use my thinning shears. Actually, no, I'm not going to use thinning shears because I know that this guy is on the brink of what he can tolerate. So I'm just, especially around his eyes. So I am going to use my finishing shears for everything on him. Okay, and if he starts to have a moment again, we just go back to slowing down. Because he's starting to react because I'm moving too quickly. So I go back to scissoring an area not by his eyes, just to get him calm again. And then I'm going to come back to by his eyes. But remember, lots of times if, they, if you do get a win with a puppy, get them to calm down. Um, a lot of times they go back, revert back when you start to move quick. Because you're like, oh good, they're behaving themselves. Now I'll go back to my normal speed. Just think, slow it down, slow it down. And that goes for really fearful dogs, that goes for aggressive dogs, it works really well with all sorts of dogs, senior dogs. But I find for puppies especially, lots of times we just move too quick for them. So just blending that side. And I'm just fluffing up the top. Now this dog is going to totally have a part down the center, so I'm gonna work with it, but in a slight way. I'm just gonna lightly dust, and I'm just lightly dusting into the side. But I kinda of wanna keep the volume so that we have this round little top. Wrap it up. Remember, you have to comb, comb, comb. The key to great scissoring is combing. All I'm doing is following my same pattern and just dusting it in. So you see we've got a completely transformed puppy now because we, we took our time. Because they're just, he's just protesting that he, he doesn't know what's going on. He's with his mom, he gets to do what he wants. And so he's just, he's just having a moment. So you just gotta, gotta be super calm. And then I know it seems like it takes a long time. But sometimes you're in a rush schedule and it's a little scary, but trust me, it's so worth it to take your time with a puppy like this because we're going to make him a good puppy for life. Okay, so now we've got our whole top of our head in. We've got our eyes done. Now we got to figure out what to do with this muzzle. I'll get you guys to stick that one in the kennel, please. I'm just going to let them put this little one in the kennel before we continue because he's distracted. He wants to watch the other guys. So what I like to do is look at their head from an above view down. So see how we have this huge cheek poofing out? We want to round this in, but with our thinning shears. We don't want to do it with the clippers like I showed you guys before. Let me see if you'll let me use thinning shears. I'm going to come in with the comb side of my thinning shears and just blend down. And I'm blending kind of up into the base of the ear. Okay? And now I don't want to layer a lot of this top hair because I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of lines. Not to mention, I'm not going to have enough weighted hair to hold it down. So, looking from a top view, see how we can see what's pooping out? So then I'm going to come with my hair shears and comb through it. So we're wrapping underneath. Now I've already done the sides of my head and around the eyes. So that's my first step. Now I need to do it on the other side. So from an above view, Comb that stuff right out to the side. Now I'm gonna use the comb side of my, use my curve shears here. I'm gonna have to come this way. I'm gonna comb through. I'm gonna use my curved scissors. Combing through. And again, I'm looking from that above view. So comb it out. Can you see what doesn't match? So from that above view, I can tell, and then I can keep combing down until I do get it to blend in. And this is how you're gonna get the hair to nicely wrap under, but without sacrificing the top hair, because we want that weight to hold the face down. Now I'm gonna see how my sides are comparing. I'm gonna come in, comb everything forward. 
and anything that's past the nose, I'm gonna scissor off. And I'm going very slow with this guy, slower than normal, because if I start to move too quick, that's when we're gonna lose what ground we've got with him. Now if you guys could go out through the bathing room, just so we don't uh, disturb this guy, that'd be great. So once, see how when I've done that front muzzle, now it's going to the side. Now I can start to scissor this muzzle into the side of his head. Okay? And it's just distracted by everybody getting ready to go. So I'm going to comb down my hair on the side. You can see I've got the top jaw coming in. Now I'm going to start to tame the bottom jaw in with the same. Coming under. I'm getting my bottom jaw to match. But see how nicely everything's coming under on its own? That's because we scissored through from a top view. And if there's a bit of an edge there, this is where I like to come in with my finisher and just dust that edge off, just so I don't have a sharp edge. Okay, that's one side. I'm gonna switch to the other. And again, notice how slow my movements are with this puppy because I can't go the normal speed I could with an adult dog because this guy doesn't tolerate it. He puts his paw, I'm just gonna kinda gently rock him side to side until he puts it down. Because his paw is like your first sign of, hey, I'm, I don't like what you're doing kind of thing. So I just want him to be like, hey, it's okay. Calm down, we're good. Making sure the side of his head is good. And see, it's not the sound that bothers him, it's the eyes that bothers him. Okay, so same thing, we're going to try and match our bottom jaw. There's not going to be as much to do on this side because we did more on the other side. Just coming in, we're offing it up. Again, if there's a bit of an edge here, just come in and soften it. So see how keeping this cheek hair was vital. If we cut that cheek hair off by clipping it down, we would not have this round look. So the key is this cheek hair right here. See from the front, that cheek hair was vital, the side cheek hair. So again, I like to check my work by setting his head down and combing out. See how we can see what needs to be scissored in? So I'm dusting through again on both sides. down to check your work. See how cute his little head's coming. And now the last thing I have to do, I'm going to retouch this side again on the jawline. Always double, triple check your work and comb, comb, comb. The key to good scissoring is combing. Check this side again. See how there's something that's popped out. And come back. re scissor that in. And now you've got two options on the front muzzle area. With, with a boy, I like to leave it a little bit heavier in the mustache. With a girl, I would come in and round this off more. This one is a boy, so I'm gonna leave it. Especially since this family has boys and girl dogs in the family, I kinda like them to look feminine and masculine. So in this case, I'm just going to work on rounding off that goatee area. So you, you have where you scissored here, you have where you scissored there, so we're just gonna match those up. Just bring those two worlds together. And because we scissored all under here already, it's just the front that you have to scissor in. And I'm just setting my finger in his mouth a little bit, and that just kind of keeps him just steady. But see, once we let him get him to the point where he's chosen to give in, then it's a really easy process from there. I'm just going back and forth, and again, I'm, I'm getting that to round under. That's how it's going to stay. Even when he shakes his head out, it's going to stay and look cute. Okay, so I'm going to comb this all out. we got a cowlick in here. We know that this head's going to end up parting in the future, so I'm just going to work with it from now, because I know that that's the way it's going to be. 
Now I like to come in with my finishing shears and just dust everything in, just to give it that little bit sharper look. But this should only be a dusting because you've done all your work with your, with your uh, thinning shears already. So there's kind of two ways you can use thinning shears. You can whack out the whole structure with your finishing shears first, and then fine tune with your thinning shears and soften it. Or you can do what I like to do, which is groom the, the dog with your thinning shears and then sharpen everything with your finishing shears. That's kind of my method of choice. So I'm just coming in and touching everything up. I'm gonna touch up the top of his head here. Get it all sharp looking. A little bit by his eyes here. It's looking super cute. And then last but not least, I'm just gonna take my finishing shear, touch up this bottom. And see now we've got him totally relaxed. And this is how you can end a groom on a wonderful, wonderful note where he actually learns that this is actually a relaxing process. And then combing his ears out. And he's clipping long ears. And that's how you get your cute little round face on a new puppy. He had a bit of a rough start, but we got him right calm the way I always get my puppies. And this is how I get all my dogs guys trained to be totally relaxed and um, to eventually lay down and just kind of set their hand in my, their head in my hand. You just want them to be just relaxed and happy. So much nicer to be happy. Yeah, it is. Okay, that was that little guy. Um, I'm Dana Alexander with Prestige Dog Grooming School. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that and got some good tips, and we'll talk to you guys soon.